YouTube afterward. So we had some troubles with YouTube, uh, possibly because of some settings in the live stream. Uh, we don't know yet. Uh, Emily said she's going to take a look. So hopefully we'll get that sorted out. And also, uh, yeah, so we can get started. Um, I don't recall if we ever went through the team specific team retro uh, notes, uh, but they're linked in the Google Doc, as you can see. So teams can, everybody can go, go through those specifically and read those. And then we can actually talk about how we want to do this retro in the future at the end of this call, which might be relevant. Uh, previous retro improvement task again is more Zoom troubles. Um, so I think Trevor left a note saying that he's going to take a look and so he can take a, a peek at issue 185 uh, in the People Ops general project if you're interested. Um, but beyond that, we can jump into it. Uh, I see a lot of people clicking around, but does anybody want to start talking or put, put up some notes into what went well this month. Um, if not, anybody want to speak specifically in their particular area and we can click through to a particular team. So the plan team uh, did a lot of good things. So if you look at the plan link uh, for the retro, we shipped a good number of issues in 11.3. Um, and a lot of them were, were GitLab ultimate uh, features with, with epics and portfolio management in general. So I guess um, what I'm leading to is actually not, 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 the plan team did a great job, but it was ultimately uh, the production team and the team getting the releases out. So I was really happy and I think um, all the folks that are responsible for getting the RCs out early um, was really amazing. Um, so, so we had a good number of features that unfortunately didn't make it for 11.2 and they were pushed to 11.3 for uh, portfolio management. Um, so it really sucked because we were really close but we missed just missed the freeze. Um, but it also meant that those features were just merged uh, during the, you know, the, 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 like the re regression stage. I don't know what we call that, those two weeks uh, at the, after the 11.2 free. So they were already in master and ready to rock. Um, so because we got our release candidates out so early, at least users of GitLab.com and in particular us were able to enjoy those features really quickly. So I think that, that was great. We're making huge strides towards continuous uh, deployment from that perspective. And so um, I, I you know, kudos to the team. I think that went really well um, from the plan perspective. Well, for that, that impact in uh, the plan team. So I'll, I'll leave a comment there in the agenda. Anything else people want to bring up? Bob is just typing, so uh, might as well speak up, Bob. Yeah, so uh, we had some patches that needed to be applied to GitLab.com during the full release cycle. So that started somewhere around the first of the month up until the 22nd. Um, we um, remember those patches often, but just as often we forgot about them. And then we had the release on the 22nd, which basically is the, our last RC that we tagged with the same version number, a cosmetic release, we call it. So it looks like the same release that our customers are getting and so on. And after that, we uh, tried to apply those patches, but something went wrong. We didn't notice what happened immediately, but we continued with our weekend because it was a Saturday. So that means that GitLab.com remained unpatched over the weekend. And we only noticed on Monday that was uh, going wrong. There's a um, uh, postmortem document about that, which I'll link which I'll dig up and link from, um, from the main document here. All right, if nothing else, we'll jump to the final point, um, which is making this meeting async. Um, so you can click through. Uh, I'll er let Eric uh, speak to whatever you're typing. Yeah, I'll, I'll capture the notes after. What what I think we should do is one engineering should should take over ownership of the of the retrospective. Um, PM uh, should be the own and run the kickoff, so we can kind of divide and conquer there. 
Um, there's this trend of teams doing their own retrospectives. That's really important because a good retrospective is like a psychologically safe space to, you know, in a nice way, you know, call someone out, your teammate, for something that they should have done but maybe maybe didn't do. And when it's a broad meeting, when it's streamed to YouTube, I think every, people are holding back from doing that sort of thing, and we're, and we're seeing that. So I think we should formalize the the individual group or team level retrospectives. Engineering managers run those, record those in docs. If they want to do them async, uh, great. If they want to do them synchronous, great, but have a doc either way. And then this meeting should be about transparency, external to the company and internal to the company. And I think what this meeting should become is, you know, managers coming here and, uh, and you know, populating the stock with essentially the highlights from their individual docs. That does mean a little bit of duplication of information, but I view that as curation. Like we're curating this, like what, what do people outside uh, the company want to understand about what's going on? Um, uh, of course, we link back to those docs if people want to dive in. Um, and then this be, this is still a, a synchronous and live streamed meeting. So that way it's, again, it's serving that purpose of, uh, of transparency and outward communication. Um, so I think I'm, I've articulated that in the, uh, in the issue, um, but thanks for creating that, Victor, and we'll run with that. I think our goal will be to, uh, if that's the plan, lock it down. If it needs to change, change it. But, ta but in the, the next opportunity, a month from now, um, perform whatever change we're, we're going to do. And then that'll allow you to focus on the, the kickoff. Great. Um, did, did you want to assign somebody to that? So uh, unless you... I, I don't mind running this meeting and just clicking buttons in YouTube. I mind when it doesn't work, but uh, I don't mind. Yeah, no, I think it. when I say take it over, I mean like okay. we deal with YouTube streaming issues. Okay. Someone owns it. If they're on vacation, they've got backup, like full full ownership. That'll be uh, great. Yeah. All right. So I will. I will. And so until you tell me who it is, should I just uh, just forward? It? Uh, I already I already have someone in mind. I just want to have that conversation with them. But like okay. uh, tomorrow, yes, we'll have that person, and they'll have thirty days to figure it out. Okay, uh, we'll do. Thank you. Do you want to wrap it up, Eric? Any parting words for us? I think uh, I think that's the big action item. Is let's uh, you know we we made a bunch of changes to this meeting. Um, I think those worked, and now it's it's at another inflection point. So the big thing to do is to uh, um, sort of redefine the purpose of this meeting and 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 change ownership and kick it off again. All right. Bye, everyone.